the uh, first chapter. So the Gita is a little bit, these 18 chapters are a little bit like the tarot deck. If you're familiar with the tarot deck, the tarot deck has a major arcana and a minor arcana. And um, the major arcana deck is 22 cards that represent the cycle of spiritual growth. And they have a, a progression that move from zero to, to 21. And um, the Bhagavad Gita is a little bit like that. It progresses along the spiritual journey of these questions. And the first chapter in the Bhagavad Gita is called Arjun's Despair. So I don't think it's any accident that the Bhagavad Gita starts with despair. How many of us would say that our, our own spiritual journey started with some form of, of disappointment? You know, that, that some form of despair, depression, you know, this sucks, was the waking up, you know, point in life that said, hmm, hmm, what's this all about? So I, uh, we're going to read about Arjun's specific predicament. So King Dhritarishtra said, and this is the only time that we hear about him, in the field of righteousness, the field of Karu, tell me, Sanjay, what happened when my army and the Pandavas faced each other eager for battle? The poet Sanjay said, Look at this great army, led by the son of Drupada, your worthy pupil. Many great warriors stand ready to do battle. Men as formidable as Bhima and Arjun, Virata, the mighty Drupada, the heroic king of Benares, and blah, blah, blah. He goes on literally for chapters, listing all of the warriors that are on the field. Now, if you've read the Mahabharata, you actually know these characters, and they have a lot of history to them, and they're actually pieces, they're all different pieces of the, of the internal world, and they're all here on this um, battlefield. Then Bhishma, the aged grandfather of the Karus, roared his lion's roar and blew a powerful blast on his conch horn, and Duryodhana's heart leapt with joy. Immediately, all the conchs blared and the kettle drums, cymbals, trumpets to a deafening clamor. Standing in their great chariot, yoked with white horses, Krishna and Arjun blew their celestial conchs. So let's just go back thousands of years and just think for a moment about what war was like. You know, we didn't stand back with guns and shoot. War then was like you're coming up and you're seeing the person and you're jabbing them, you know, with knives and their blood is spurting out on you and you're looking at them in the eye. You know, it's, it's you know, eye to eye, battle to battle combat, right? So just get an idea of what this poignant moment is, is about. These two sides on a battlefield ready to kill each other and what, what that takes. Then Arjun, looking at the battle ranks of Dhritarishtra's men, raised his bow as the weapons were about to clash and says to Krishna, drive my chariot and stop between the two armies so that I can see these warriors whom I'm about to fight, drawn up and eager for battle. I want to look at the men gathered here ready to do service for Dhritarishtra's evil-minded son. Krishna drove the chariot and brought it to a halt midway between the two armies. Look, Arjun, from here you can see all the Karus who are gathered to do battle. Arjun saw them standing there. Fathers, grandfathers, teachers, uncles, brothers, sons, grandsons, father-in-laws, and friends, kinsmen on both sides, each arrayed against the other. In despair, overwhelmed with pity, he said, as I see my own kinsmen gathered here, eager to fight, my legs weaken, my mouth dries, my body trembles, my hair stands on end, my skin burns, the bow gun diver drops from my hand, I'm beside myself, my mind is reeling. Krishna, I see no good that could come from killing my own kinsmen in battle. I have no desire for victory or for the pleasures of kingship. Though they want to kill me, I have no desire to kill them not even for the kingship of the three worlds, let alone for one here on earth. What joy could we have in killing Dhritarishtra's men? Evil will cling to us if we do, even though they're the aggressors, because their minds are overpowered with greed and they see no harm in destroying the family or no crime and treachery to friends. We should know better, Krishna. Clearly seeing harm caused by the destruction of the family, we should turn back from this evil. It would be better if Dhritarishtra's men killed me now unarmed and unresisting. 
Having spoken these words, Arjun sank down in the chariot, dropped his arrow and bow, his mind heavy with grief. Oi. <laughs> Not a good time to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so here he is at this poignant, you know, moment. And for me, the setting of the Gita, this particular setting of the Gita, I find so amazing because it brings up every question, really every question. Here's a situation 5,000 years old, and the truth is the same damn question is sitting on us today. We're actually on this same battlefield, all of us, in some way. And so that's my question to you is, Considering this um, poignant situation, number one, what do you think Arjun does, or what do you think Krishna says to Arjun? And if you, you know, know the story, you know, hold back for a moment. But um, so that's one question. What do you think Krishna's advice is to uh, Arjun? The other question is: So how are you on this battlefield yourself? How does this battlefield of thousands of years ago apply to the battlefield of today? <laughs> 